Travelling at such breakneck speed, horror cinema can sometimes feel like a dime a dozen when it comes to watching movies that are actually worth watching. When we really get down to brass tacks though, there are a staggering amount of horror flicks released each year, and since the 1970s, an average of 250 feature films per year were released into the visual slipstream of horror. Now though, that number has skyrocketed, and an average of 900 films per year are released worldwide, including independent cinema. And although we wish we could, there are only so many hours in a day, and it's difficult to find the time to fully digest some of the greatest flicks vastly forgotten by horror cinema. But that's why we're here, right? So let's take a look. Hello, horror fans, and welcome back to the Scary Channel on YouTube Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finch, as today we rummage through the vinyl collection of the long lost greats and take a look at the top five scariest forgotten horror movies. Roll the clip. Never, ever, ever under any circumstances say, I'll be right back, because you won't be back. I'm getting another beer, you want one? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back! Oh! For the curious amongst you, that clip was from Wes Craven's 1996 slasher masterpiece, Scream. And on that note, I'll be right back. Oh, not again, Lucy. <laughs> oh, Kicking off at number five, Road Games, 1981. Oh, he's just killed a girl. Did he make love to her first? I don't know. What's the difference? It makes a lot of difference. I think in order to play the game properly, we have to know what he thinks of women. And the fact that this film is widely forgotten by the mainstream is a feat in and of itself, because stylistically, Rogue Games is a visual treat that was way, way ahead of its time. It's also widely considered by none other than Quentin Tarantino to be his favourite film ever made. If that's not an accolade, I don't know what is. Released in 1981, Rogue Games is an Australian horror thriller set in the outback, produced and directed by Richard Franklin and written by Everett de Roche, and starring... You just wait for it. The one, the only, Jamie Lee Curtis. During a time when her career as the greatest final girl of horror history had already been cemented in John Carpenter's Halloween. She figured she'd head over to Australia, shoot this film, and then everyone kind of forgot about it. Hmm. But they shouldn't have, because it's really, really good. What plays out is an incredibly straightforward storyline. A truck driver named Patrick Quid, played by the formidable Stacey Keach, travels across the outback, picks up a hitchhiker, Jamie Lee Curtis, all the while a killer is on the loose. And because of that simple storyline, what plays out is an almost Hitchcockian runaway train, with direct nods to the tight dialogue and characterization of Rear Window and North by Northwest. If you're into equal parts sweeping vistas and equal parts close quarters violence, you will absolutely love this film. Coming in at number four, Parents, 1989. All right. You'll either love this film or you'll hate it, because the very DNA of this film is divisive in nature, and it's a questionable, subjective approach to confront what is essentially psychological child abuse, with what is also essentially a throwback horror comedy. But for me, it works, and 1989's Parents is a gem of over-amplified yet endearing horror. Directed by Bob Balaban and written by Christopher Hawthorne, Parents tells the story of a 10-year-old kid named Michael and his parents Nick and Lily, who've just moved from Massachusetts to a new neighbourhood in 1954 suburbia. Also, turns out that his parents are cannibals and they're in the habit of killing people, chopping them up and serving it to the poor kid, unbeknownst to him, in his spaghetti bolognese. Not cool, parents. Not cool at all. Yeah, listen, this film was an absolute flop at the box office, and Balaban's foray into feature filmmaking never truly recovered. But if you scratch away the surface, Parents is just an incredibly entertaining and straight up grotesque display of mom and pop suburban horror. While the tone may be off in some parts, the fact that we see this whole thing through the eyes of a child is horrifying enough. Next up at number three, The Gate, 1987. And for many people throughout the 90s, this was the film that would randomly pop up late at night on a rerun horror channel, unsuspectingly to scare the living daylight out of us kids. For a kid, 1987's The Gate is actually a terrifying movie, but watching it later in life, it's such an entertaining horror flick that it's hard to pass it by. And also, given that this film was given a meager 2.5 million budget for what was essentially intended to be a blockbuster feature, it's incredible what was stylistically achieved. Written by Michael 
Nankin and directed by Tibor Takach, The Gate is essentially the Goonies for lovers of Lovecraftian fiction. The plot follows a kid called Glenn who, alongside his buddies, discover a portal to a nightmarish domain of evil gods right in his backyard. And what plays out is a classic tale of a bunch of ramshackled suburban kids trying to battle the forces of evil. But this film shines in its small nuanced scenes where the true horror begins to reveal itself. I don't really want to ruin anything but there's a scene where Glenn dreams that he's dancing with what he thinks is his dead mother, but it turns out to be something much, much more horrifying than that. Give this one a watch, you'll have fun either way. Swinging in at number two, Opera, 1987. Man, this film is insane. We briefly spoke about Italian giallo horror a week or so ago, and 1987's opera is perhaps one of the best modern demonstrations of this strange and alluring style of horror cinema. Also known as Terror at the Opera, this film was written and directed by Italian cinematic legend Dario Argento, the man also responsible for the fantastic 1977 supernatural thriller Suspiria. An opera follows the story of a woman named Betty, the unwitting star of an avant garde production of Verdi's Macbeth, who is stalked by a mysterious and exceedingly violent killer. It's a fantastic, horrific mystery and stylistically is a frantic joy to watch. The thing is though, director Dario Argento refused to budge when the studio tried to cut the last 11 minutes of this film and because of that, opera was never released theatrically, only being made available in the US as a VHS release. I think perhaps if it was released fully to theatres then this film would have cemented its place amongst the greats of horror cinema. 1987 was a year of hits and misses for horror cinema, but opera would have probably taken the box office if it had the chance. And finally, our number one spot, Kronos, 1993. And damn it, I just love this film, and for those of you that don't know, Kronos is the first feature film ever made by the main man himself, Guillermo del Toro, although widely it never truly received the recognition that it deserved. Released in 1993 and written and directed by Guillermo del Toro, Kronos tells the story of Jesus Gris, a religious antiques dealer who miraculously comes into possession of an ancient mechanical scarab-like device that inadvertently dishes out the power of eternal life. But by eternal life, what we really mean is vampirism. It's interesting though because like with most of del Toro's work, this isn't exactly a film about vampires, yet relies on his painfully original blend of mythology and religious iconography to deliver an authentic tale of fantasy and suspense rooted in atmospheric horror. Again, like with most of his work, Kronos could easily be lifted straight from the folklore of South America and Europe, none of which is based in oversaturated gore, but instead delivered as the dark horror and violence of humanity's brush with the magical and the mystic. As del Toro painfully continues to remind us, there is a price to pay for the curious and Kronos is great if you're curious so just give it a watch. Well unfortunately that's all we've got time for in today's video, why don't you let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below and speak your mind on the forgotten movies of horror cinema. Before we depart though let's read out some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. First up Luna Flame says, can I have a shout out, your channel is amazing. Well yeah for sure Luna Flame, you got it, you are also Equally amazing. Next up, Gunther Coco says, Let me get a shout out, bro, please. I love your videos, man. Well, whilst we're on this topic, of course you can, Gunther Coco. Four for you, Gunther Coco. You go, Gunther Coco. That was a Mean Girls reference, just if you didn't get it. And finally, Jiggy Joe says, Hey, I love all your videos so much. Could you please shout me out if you don't mind? And well, Jiggy Joe, I don't mind at all, good buddy. My work here is done. Well, on that note, horror fans, just stick around all the way until the end. If you're a fan of this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy. Hey.